Thank you. So we have humor in common with the last one. How many of you work in technology? <laughs> Woohoo! Yay! That's actually a lot of you. I would have expected a few more Bitcoin billionaires and people self-righteously quitting Facebook by this point. But I guess there are a few stragglers left who aren't there with us. Um, Anyway, I have a few crypto kitties for sale after the event. Come, come talk to me. So this talk is about Silicon Valley. I'm still trying to figure out if it applies to Sil uh, Seattle. I, I grew up in San Francisco. I now live on Lopez Island. San Francisco is definitely Silicon Valley. Lopez Island is definitely not. Seattle, it's confusing to me. Maybe you guys can help me. I mean, you've got Patagonia, you've got bicycles, you've got VCs, you've got a shit ton of Californians, but... You've also got rain, and I'm pretty sure they've banned rain already. So you must know these people, right? Seattle's culture has changed. Oh my god, they want to one-up you. When I moved here, studios rented for only 4000 a month. <laughs> They're actually saying something really simple. Let's translate. I gentrified this place first, asshole, okay? So this, this talk is about how we in technology don't have a sense of humor. It's, it's pretty embarrassing. We're, we're actually outsourcing our humor. We're paying big bucks to Hollywood to laugh at us. We're outsourcing self-mockery. And I'm gonna argue that this humor handicap is holding us back. If you look at the mega-rich of past eras, they built railroads and they funded universities. Our new bro Rich fund apps and kids not to go to university. There, there's something wrong about this. And, and um, oh geez, I just prepared this talk two nights ago. They told me two nights ago. I missed the most important thing. It's not funny how unfunny we are. I'll come back to the thing I was going to say before. But in any way, to combat this lack of humor, I launched the Silicon Valley magnet set. Do you guys remember those poetry magnets from the 90s? Well, this is the same thing with the hottest buzzwords harvested straight from the mouths of Menlo Park entrepreneurs. You just go in there and pluck them out. And you could recombine these buzzwords to form the elevator pitch for your next billion dollar Yahoo acquisition. So the poems came flooding in, haikus like an Uber for drones, payable only with Bitcoin, delivering dreams, or a limerick. There once was a girl from Sand Hill Road. Oh no, wait. There wasn't a single girl from Sand Hill Road. But Peter Thiel, right? I got my magnets placed on his fridge. You'll notice the front doors, not magnetic. You can't stick anything to them. You gotta go in the side. In 2008, I launched a new set of AI magnets. According to Wired Magazine, 78% of middle schoolers in Palo Alto have built a convolutional neural net in their spare time. 75% of those were to predict well, whether somebody liked them or not. The accuracy, not so great. But so, well, we all know that Silicon Valley English, there's a linguistic divide. There's a saying in Silicon Valley, solve your own problems first. Kind of like when you're on an airplane, you put your own mask on first. So this has created some problems, right? When people come here and to us in technology, they start talking about Flint, Michigan. You're like, Flint, is that an app? We need these tools to translate. We need these magnets to translate to more seamlessly communicate with Midwestern relatives at, at Thanksgiving. <laughs> so this is an example of a, of a translation. Um, we, we like to believe we have this mythology in Silicon Valley that you know the little guy, the entrepreneur, has all the, the power. That is the biggest lie of Silicon Valley. In truth, in the last 10 or 15 years, we've become commoditized. Silicon Valley as a place for misfits or hackers is long gone. It's now a place for socially awkward kids with CS degrees from Stanford and Harvard MBAs who dream of becoming PMs at Square. But the money is here to stay. We just have to accept that. The, these neighborhoods are about to become more, even more unbearable, but just as a maturing child learns self-awareness and a capacity for humor, it's my hope that as our cities grow up, we'll also gain that self-awareness. Freud called humor a triumph over narcissism, and with these magnets, it's also my hope that we'll be able to achieve that triumph. We like to think of our algorithms and our translations as somehow neutral, but in fact, they're codified opinion. 
Humor is not just a sign of a maturing culture, but a reminder that not all human problems can be solved with code. Thank you. Thank you.